What kind of country throws someone in a cage for publicly criticising the religion of Islam? Saudi Arabia? Iran? Afghanistan under the Taliban? Well now you can add the United Kingdom to that list. Because European Parliament candidate and leader of the Liberty GB party, Paul Weston, was arrested by police last weekend for publicly reciting a Winston Churchill quote that was critical of Islam. How dreadful are the curses which Islam lays on its votaries? Besides the fanatical frenzy, which is as dangerous in a man as hydrophobia in a dog, there is this fearful, fatalistic apathy. The effects are apparent in many countries. Improvident habits, slovenly systems of agriculture, sluggish methods of commerce and insecurity of property exist wherever the followers of the Prophet Muhammad rule or live. A degraded sensualism deprives this life of its grace and refinement and the next of its dignity and sanctity. The fact that in Islamic law every woman must belong to some man as his absolute property, either as a wealth a wife, a child, or a concubine must delay the final extinction of slavery until the faith of Islam has ceased to be a great power amongst men. Individual Muslims may show splendid qualities, but the influence of the Islamic religion paralyzes the social development of those who follow it. No stronger retrograde force exists in this world, and far from it being moribund, Islamism is a militant and proselytizing faith. It is already spread throughout Central Africa, raising fearless warriors at every step. And were it not that Christianity is sheltered in the strong arms of science, the science against which Islam has vainly struggled, the civilization of modern Europe might fall, as fell the civilization of ancient Rome. Now, the main point of that quote is to berate Islam for its appalling treatment of women in some Muslim societies. Not once does it mention anything to do with race, and yet Weston was arrested for committing a racially aggravated crime under Section 4 of the Public Order Act, fingerprinted, DNA sampled, and could face up to two years in prison. Why was he arrested? Well, someone in the crowd took offence to Weston's thought crime and reported him to the authorities. Again, Weston wasn't inciting violence. He made no racist utterance whatsoever. He simply quoted Winston Churchill. So are we to assume that if Winston Churchill, who was British Prime Minister during World War II, spearheaded the defeat of Nazi totalitarianism, was to speak the same words today, that he too would be arrested by the Thought Police? What does that tell you about the state of free speech in the United Kingdom today? We also learned this week that Scorpions drummer James Kotak was sentenced to a month in jail for making a remark about, quote, non-educated Muslims while travelling through Dubai Airport. While Kotak was punished for his thought crime of, quote, insulting Islam, even in the United Arab Emirates, the punishment is less severe than in the United Kingdom. Oh, and by the way, while criticising Islam is a horrendous hate crime in the eyes of the British justice system, you are free to stage national theatre shows labelled as, quote, hate-filled mockery, which depict Jesus Christ as a homosexual. That's just fine. Imagine if someone attempted to put on a national theatre production depicting the Prophet Muhammad as a paedophile. When Salman Rushdie wrote a work of fiction the Satanic Verses, which merely talked about Mohammed adding three verses to the Quran. A fatwa was issued against his life, and Muslims marched through the streets of Britain, calling for Rushdie's summary execution. Incitement to violence? Well, no, apparently in the UK, it's perfectly acceptable to call for someone's murder, but don't you dare quote a historical figure, or you'll be thrown in jail. But at least in America, you have the First Amendment, right? Well, Maybe not for much longer. Labelled a frankly chilling proposition by the editors of the Boston Herald, the Hate Crime Reporting Act of 2014, which will police free speech on the internet, radio and television, has prompted concern among some that strenuous criticism of immigration policy could be characterised as a hate crime. 
And here's the takeaway. If any of you are offended by the content of this video, then good, be offended. I don't care, because that does not constitute an argument. What offends me is how political correctness has been hijacked and used as a weapon by the establishment in the West to rip huge chunks out of the edifice of freedom of speech and the right to calmly speak one's mind without the threat of a tap on the shoulder from the thought police. No matter what your faith, race or creed, that should not only offend you, it should downright terrify you.